when crude oil is brought to the refinery it is distilled and then depending on the, the different temperatures uh, the crude oil then becomes uh, either heating fuel oil or lubricating oil, diesel, kerosene, naphtha, petrol or, or refinery gas. What interests us in aviation is uh, kerosene and uh, gasoline or petrol. So the gasoline uh, fuel can then be uh, converted to avgas and there are different types of, of avgas. The one that's uh, only available in Ireland is uh, 100 uh, low lead. The kerosene uh, based fuels that's uh, Jet A and Jet A1. Jet A1 is what is very common around the world. Jet A probably more um, limited to the United States. And then in between uh, we have a blend uh, of Jet B. So Jet B is a blend of of gas and of the kerosene type fuels. There have been aircraft that have diesel engines um, but pr predominantly it's um, uh, Jet A1 and of gas uh, fuels that are used in, air in aviation. So of the crude oil that is distilled about 12% of it um, comes jet fuel. So Jet A uh, is used for general jet aviation in the US. It is colorless and has a specific gravity of 0.8 and a freezing point of minus 44 degrees Celsius and a flash point of 46 degrees Celsius. Jet A1 is ubiquitous, you know, it's everywhere uh, around the world. Um, very commonly used in, in, in commercial and military aviation. It has a lower freezing point so that means the aircraft can fly higher. It is also colorless uh, with a specific gravity of 0.8, a freezing point of minus 50 degrees Celsius and a flash point of 40 degrees Celsius. So Jet B is a blend of, of both of them. Uh, so it's a blend of 30% kerosene and 70% gasoline and it's this higher percentage of gasoline that uh, makes it less susceptible to to freezing okay so we have a freezing point of minus 60 but the the gasoline gives it a lower flash point so it's a flash point of 18 degrees celsius um, it is primarily used in military applications or in uh, locations that have um, um, very cold temperatures, Siberia, Alaska, Canada, Antarctic, that, that sort of region. Uh, it is um, straw coloured and it has a specific gravity of uh, 0.76. The volatility and vapour pressure uh, is higher than for Jet A and Jet B, uh, sorry, Jet A and Jet A1. Primarily, again, because of the, the gasoline content. With the fuels, then, if we take Jet A1, for example, we can get some Jet A1 and then we put it through a process where we put in additives. So there could be anti icing additives, there's be biocide, anti antioxidants, anti foaming additives, and then they give us derivatives of Jet A1. So things like uh, JP8 and JP5. So JP5, for example, would be associated with um, naval military operations. And, you know, it's, it's to stop the, the fuel from foaming. So if you can think of the fuel in, in the tank and as the ship is pitching up and down, uh, it may tend to foam and that can cause problems. So they put an anti-foaming uh, additive into the, into the fuel for naval operations. Okay, so that's the background uh, to aviation fuels. But let me uh, just finish on their energy content. So we see here uh, the aviation gasoline 
has an energy content of um, 43 megajoules per kilogram, 43.7. Um, the white cut fuel, so white cut is, is another name for uh, Jet B, that has an energy content of 43.54, and kerosene uh, has 43.28. So you can see the difference in specific gravities or densities and uh, the the energy contents this is one way of checking uh, your fuel if you if you measure the specific gravity you know if it's off way off from these figures you know then that the fuel has been uh, contaminated all right that's it for this video